All right, we'll, uh, we'll get started then. So first off, welcome. Uh, this is one of our Video Ray e-workshop series. Today we're going to be talking about the Video Ray Pro 4 Ultra Bass. Uh, introductions first. My name is Brian Luzzi. I'm the marketing manager here at Video Ray. Uh, I'm being assisted today by Kate McGarry, uh, who also works in the marketing department. Um, and also, Simeon Whitehill is our cameraman today. So he'll be recording this. Uh, in case folks miss part of it or don't show up on time, we will make this available afterwards, uh, either online uh, or as a download somewhere. So don't worry if you miss something, we'll, uh, we'll make it available to you. Um, a little bit of housekeeping here for our uh, e-workshops. Um, if you're not quite familiar with the GoToWebinar system, um, I'm going to show you this important feature of it. This is uh, kind of where you can interact with us. This is the question. Uh, field right here. It's in the, the, the interface on your screen. There's a blank field there. It says questions, obviously. Um, anytime you want to, uh, if something you know, intrigues you, write your question in there. Uh, what we're going to do is compile those, and when we finish the e-workshop, now we're going to return to those and take them in order and hopefully get everybody's questions answered uh, satisfactory. Okay, a little bit about what we will cover today. You may be familiar with our organization here. Some of you may be new to us. Uh, so I'm going to briefly cover the, the history of our company, a little bit about Video Ray, about what we do here. Um, and then this is why you signed up. We're going to talk about the Video Ray Pro 4 Ultra Base ROV system. We're going to talk about the components. Uh, we're going to talk about some of the features that are unique to the Pro 4 Ultra. Talk about some of the differences between the Ultra and uh, our standard Pro 4 ROV models. We're going to talk about some of the applications uh, that go very well with this ROV system, uh, almost like it was designed just for these applications. We're going to talk about those a little bit. Uh, and then we're going to talk about some, some purchasing points. If uh, a lot of you out there are in the market for an ROV, which is maybe why you're here, you're gathering information, um, we're going to talk about five kind of main points uh, in the ROV purchasing process. Uh, and to help you along with your decision. Uh, so we're going to cover those at the end as well. So with that, we'll get right to it uh, and tell you a little bit about Video Ray. But who is Video Ray? What do we do? Uh, we manufacture small, remotely operated vehicles, or ROVs, that go underwater for rapid inspections. Uh, we have been around for 15 years. We started business in 1999 in the garage of our president. Uh, we are now have now grown to a 30,000 square foot facility in Pottstown, Pennsylvania, which is about 25 miles west-ish of the city of Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. Uh, at, this, at this moment, we have about 45 uh, full-time employees here, uh, anywhere from you know, sales and marketing group to administration to final ROV assembly uh, to research and development uh, in this building here. Um, from 1999, 15 years ago, uh, to this point, we are well over 3,000 ROVs manufactured, assembled, and sold. Uh, now, these have been sold all over the world. Our ROVs have been on every continent, doing all kinds of work out there. Uh, so we've been around. We're on our fourth generation system now, working on our fifth very quickly. Uh, so we know what we're doing. We feel like we're pioneers in the small ROV industry, uh, and we're very proud of our product. So. Uh, with that, we will move on to the Pro 4 Ultra system. Now, I'm going to talk about the main components first uh, to give you an idea of where we're at and what we're looking at so we're all on the same page. Now, first, the most identifiable um, and probably the most important component of the Video Ray Pro 4 Ultra ROV system is, of course, the submersible or the sub, what we call it. Uh, it's the swimming robot that goes underwater that you're controlling that's giving you real-time live video footage. Uh, it can carry a host of accessories uh, and, and a payload on it, uh, but this right here is the simple base. Uh, talk a little bit about the anatomy of it. Uh, the very highly visible float block is on top. It's going to give our system buoyancy underwater. Um, Underneath that are three main hulls. Uh, the main hull, pressure hull in the middle, is going to house uh, the color camera, which is going to give you your live video footage underwater. It's color. It tilts 180 degrees up and down. 
um, and it's probably the most important feature on your sub. Flanking that are the two uh, high intensity LED lights. Uh, they're variable intensity, so you can put them on low, put them on high, depending on the illumination that you need on the water. The, re the rear of the vehicle, uh, you'll see the propulsion system. These are the two uh, main horizontal thrusters um, on the submersible. Uh, they contain brushless motors and uh, counter-rotating propellers, so the vehicle will actually spin on itself, spin on a dime around itself. Um, coming out of the back here is what we call the whip. The whip is going to connect uh, the ROV through the tether, which is this, the, another component we'll talk about, to the last component, the control panel. Uh, so it is a tethered system, controlled from the top. You're getting power and live video through the tether and this whip coming out of the sub and any data if you have accessories. Uh, and lastly on the bottom, well, we call the ballast skid. Um, this is a resting place for the ROV if it has to land anywhere. It also serves as a weighting system for the ROV uh, for different type and different densities of water. Uh, salt water versus fresh water, you may need more or less weight. Uh, to make the sub uh, close to neutrally buoyant underwater. So it's a real simple uh, ballast weighting system, no, no tools required. So that comprises the submersible part of the ROV. Now the second part is the, what's connecting the ROV to the control panel, which is the tether. Uh, I just have an example here. Um, we have a very thin diameter uh, tether. You know, what's housed inside here is our connector or our, our conductors, uh, and what this does connects to the RV, connects to the control panel, gives you power to the sub, gives you live video moving up top. Uh, what you're seeing on your screens is a is a tether management system. Some people like it; it keeps the tether nice and neat. Some people just carry it outside. Some pe people put it in a backpack. Uh, whatever whatever you like there, um, and we can get up to. A thousand feet of this, the submersible is depth rated to 300 meters or a thousand feet. So when you're talking those kind of lengths of, of tether on the high end, uh, tether management system is, is probably the way you want to go. So connecting to that is the control panel. Um, you can see on your screen here, I just give you a basic anatomy of what's going on inside the ultra panel. Um, and what I have here on the table is the ultra panel. And next to it, I have, I'm comparing it to our standard Pro 4 uh, control panel. So you can see here, uh, there's a significant uh, difference in size. And not only in size, but there is a drastic uh, difference in weight. The Pro 4 standard control panel weighs about 35, 40 pounds. Um, we call it affectionately the arm lengthener here. Um, it's, if you have to carry it any sort of long distance, it's... Uh, you have to find yourself switching hands or, or get a cart. Now what we've done with the ultra panel is shed about 40% of the weight from the regular Pro 4 panel uh, into this package here which weighs right around 9 kilos or, or around 20 pounds. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of the, the standard panel here and I'm going to show you how easy uh, the, the ultra ROV is to set up. So. With that, I'm going to step around the table and kind of walk you through what you're going to see when you open it. What you see when you open the ultra panel here, um, first probably catches your eye, is the uh, control pad. So we have a game style controller in the ultra ROV. Um, it's wireless. And so we'll put that aside and I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, up here, the first feature, the second feature you'll see is a sunshade. So on bright sunny days or whatever, it's nice to have a shade over your PC screen inside, uh, blocking out any glare from your screen. We made that really easy to take on and off in case you don't need it. So I'm going to remove it for this demonstration here. Then you're going to see the, kind of the brains of the panel here. This is a, uh, a convertible tablet uh, PC. It's all touch screen. Uh, so what we have here is we can use it in two modes. Uh, we can use it in, in uh, computer mode where you have access to the keyboard and also uh, you can use it in tablet mode. So I'm going to flip, flip it over in tablet mode for this demonstration because the touch screen is just the cool part. Um, and that's just going to set in there. Locks in place with a simple uh, latch there. Um, so you have your whip that's going to come out and connect your tether to the ROV. 
and your power cable. So I'm just going to fire that up real quick. Okay, and for this demonstration, I'm not going to hook up the tether. I'm just going to plug the submersible directly to the panel. So it's our standard uh, wet connectors. And with that, we'll fire it up. You're going to hear the sub go through its, its startup routine. It's going to center the camera. It's going to give you a beep, and it's going to flash the lights at you. And then we're just going to turn on our computer. These Lenovo's uh, convertible tablets are great. They fire up just like that. <clears throat> okay, now this particular uh, model right here is running uh, Windows 8 platform. Comes up. Your, your apps up here. Um, video right 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 middle. Middle. You're going to tap that. Here's your home screen. Um, we're going to tap Video Ray Cockpit, which is the control software that I'll explain a little bit in detail further after this. Your uh, cockpit window comes up. You can see uh, some live video already here. Okay. Probably helps good. You got your tap overlay and all that. And you're ready to dive. Okay, so in the, within a minute, we're all set up and ready to go. I'm going to put that aside and I'm going to continue talking about some of the features of the Pro 4 Ultra while we're up and running here. Now, I mentioned before we're lightweight. Uh, the panel itself is around 9 kilos, 20 pounds. Um, makes a huge difference from the standard Pro 4. Uh, the game style controller, which I mentioned before, uh, makes piloting very easy. It's uh, very uh, easy to hand, hold in your hands if you play video games at all. A lot of younger guys pick it up, piloting the RV very well because of that. Uh, we have a touchscreen tablet interface, which is real simple, uh, as you saw on startup there. Um, and now, a little bit about the software. We're running a lighter version of Video Ray Cockpit uh, that we normally run with our standard Pro 4 ROV systems. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the differences there uh, on the next slide. Um, total system weight. Now we mentioned that the control panel itself is around 9 kilos, 20 pounds. Now you could get this all the way down to total system weight of about 20, 20 kilos, 50 pounds with the submersible case, the control panel, and your tether in a backpack. So it's your, you know, you significantly cut down weight from the standard Pro 4 system. You're ultra mobile. You're ready to roll. You can climb with it. You can do whatever. Uh, throw it in the back of a trunk, check it on an airplane, put it on a helicopter. It's super lightweight and ready to roll. Um, along with that, minimal power requirements for this system. We're standard 110 to 240 AC, plug it in a wall. Uh, we ship it with an 800 watt inverter that you could hook up to a 12 volt uh, marine battery uh, to run off a small rib. We can also run off a 1000 watt small gasoline generator. Uh, it's simple, so you should be able to go anywhere with this, power it up with, with one of those, those means, and get your mission done. Uh, the Pro 4 Ultra is manipulator ready, and I'm going to talk a little bit about accessories on the next slide, but it's ready to go with a manipulator. It doesn't come with one, but it's ready to accept one. Um, and lastly, again, the, uh, the depth rating of this vehicle is 300 meters or 1,000 feet, uh, and the surface speed were at about 3.9 knots. Uh, and again, this is one of the differences that I'll touch on the next slide, a little bit slower than the standard Pro 4, uh, so we'll get into that right now. What are the differences? We get tons of questions about, you know, what's, why is this different from the Pro 4? Why do I need this one? Why do I need that one? Um, here's a few of the reasons uh, or some of the points that are the differences between the two systems. I mean, we have 48 volts uh, DC going down to this sub as opposed to 74 or 75 in the Pro 4 uh, standard system. Um, that's a bit less speed on this. Now, if any of you are familiar with the old GTO model that we sold for years, um, this is going to be about as you know the same speed and, and power as that Pro 3 GTO. Still, fight through currents, um, just a little bit slower than the than the jacked up Pro 4. Um, another main difference on this accessory integration in our panel. So it means there's no Ethernet, 
Um, you can't do LIN uh, uh, video enhancement on this one. So we're limited, so don't expect to put a sonar on this. Um, have video clarification, no positioning systems. Um, this is your down and dirty sub. You're getting camera here, uh, and again, manipulator. Uh, we can put a manipulator on here. So um, auto depth, yes, this will still do auto depth. <laughs> just like the regular Pro 4. Auto heading? No. Is one of the differences in the software between the standard Pro 4 and the Pro 4 Ultra. Um, auto heading feature is disabled on this, so that's something that will not come with it. Um, you're also not able to put in any user-defined text overlay. Um, so say, you, you know, on your standard Pro 4, you can use your, your keyboard to type in some text over the top that's not available on this one. Um, what you see is kind of what you get on your uh, on your screen here, as far as the instruments go, you can't move them around, resize them like you can on the uh, the standard Pro 4. They're fixed, which is you know it's just fine. You got everything you need there for this system. Your video window is fixed at 640 by 480. Uh, it's also the recording where it's going to come out at, and it's going to be recorded as a Windows Media file only on the Pro 4 Ultra, as opposed to the AVI that you can get. Um, as long with the windows on the standard Pro 4. Here you're just getting Windows Media. It plays everywhere. Um, it's simple. Um, for you know, more advanced folks or scientific folks, there's no data export on here, meaning you know, depth, heading, temperature, etc. Uh, you can't get that information from a mission out of here. Um, so you know, not a huge deal, but if you're into that, you're going to look at uh, moving up to the standard Pro 4. Uh, and there's no kind of fine engine room, tu engine room tuning in this, meaning you can't really dial your thrusters in. There's a fine and there's a turbo setting on this, so um, that's another way that we've dialed it back. So with that, uh, who's using the Ultra? What, what's this ROV good for? You know, like we've stripped back a lot of stuff on it because the folks that uh, we designed it for don't really need all that stuff, um, and primarily is uh, aquaculture uh, and tank inspection, but I'll, I'll cover a few more of that. But um, aquaculture, the sub, is, is a beaut for. Um, it's, again, the weight and its rapid setup and portability enable you to move around fish pens with ease uh, and get to all the inspection points you need on there on your netting, uh, your stock, and also your mooring points and your anchors uh, on your fish pens. So um, you can see you know, a screen capture from a of a pen in, in Norway. Um, it's, it's like this sub was designed for aquaculture. It's a fantastic tool for that. Um, you're sparing divers, the exhaust, and expense, uh, and the danger as well. So fantastic tool for aquaculture. Um, along the same lines as tank inspection, uh, because we don't need all the sonars and positioning systems when we're inspecting a tank, you just need a good camera and lights and a lightweight system to move around to either take to the top of the tank or work out of the back of a van or something like that. Uh, the Pro 4 Ultra is a fantastic ROV system for tank inspections. Um, you can see here uh, a still shot of you know inside of a water tank. All of that is recorded onto your hard drive, still images and video uh, for extraction later if you have to deliver a presentation uh, to, your, to your client or whatever, everything's stored on the hard drive here. Rep diving is another uh, fine application for the Pro 4 Ultra. Um, again, the small size and lightweight of the system, you can put it on any vessel, you can put it on a dive boat uh, when you're done diving something or if you're scouting a wreck. The size of the ROV, you can penetrate further uh, than a diver could. Um, confined area dives are dangerous. The ROV uh, with its lights will illuminate and you know, save, save a life perhaps. Um, but it's a fantastic sub to uh, sit on, on the deck, hook up a big flat screen to it, dive with all your buddies, grab a beer, show them the inside of the wreck, um, and explore a wreck that way. All right, so covered some of the applications uh, for this sub. You know, and there's, there's a ton more. Um, that was just a few that we tend to sell a lot of our ROVs to. Um, you know, if you don't need the sonar, if you're working in water with better visibility, um, this is a fantastic system. So the reason why you're here, obviously, is to get some information. Um, and I hope I gave you, you know, some, some satisfactory information on the components and the system itself. 
um, but I also like to you know give you some of uh, you know what we see on a day-to-day -day basis uh, in the way of you know people purchasing ROVs. What are they looking for? You know, what's what's important to them? Um, what's important to them is important to us. So we try to you know stress these points that I have uh, listed here uh, as things that you should be looking at when you're you're getting ready to pull the trigger on a big purchase such as a, a an ROV. It's it's not a cheap uh, tool. And so doing your homework is of vital importance. It's just like buying an automobile. Uh, so just like buying an automobile, what are we looking at first? Reliability and service of, of the system. How reliable is it? Is it going to work when I need it to work? You know, I've got a mission. I just got called out to help on the, uh, the Korean ferry with the Coast Guard. I need my system to work when it gets there. Is it going to? Do you have the confidence it's going to do that? Um, is, can you visually inspect it? You know, is, is there points on the ROV that you know uh, where your trouble spots are and can you visually inspect that to ensure you're not going to get any flooding. Um, you know, the majority of the flooding that we see is around, you know, the main domes where you can visually see uh, our O-rings here. Anybody that knows anything about underwater dive housing and equipment, O-rings are of vital importance. Um, so we make that very easily to visually inspect, make sure those things are okay. And again, uh, where water ingress can happen on the, uh, the thrusters here, where the sh motor shaft comes through to the propeller, we have a, a very simple uh, cartridge seal that's visually inspectable. Uh, you know when it's, uh, when it's run its course, um, and you know when you can need to change that out, which takes a matter of seconds. Um, you know, field maintenance is extremely easy with the video ray. There's a few points that you have to pay attention to, but there's no major bench work required when you're just doing field maintenance, thrusters, cartridge seals, O-rings, and so on. So is your ROV, is it going to take, you know, a lot of tools and some, a lot of room to over the deck and somebody's going to trip and fall on it and slip? Um, you know, another thing to consider. So we've, uh, all of these features are designed uh, into our system uh, for the utmost safety of the operator and then anybody in a pool uh, or in water. Uh, that you're working in. And one of the bonus uh, points that I put on here, it's actually the sixth one, is test fly it. Fly it. Um, it's like you wouldn't buy a car without driving it first. Test fly it. We want you to get your hands on it. You should get your hands on it if you're going to drop this kind of money on an ROV system. Uh, ask the manufacturer for in-water demonstrations. Uh, if, if they say no, something's, something's fishy. Uh, if, it, if it looks pretty sitting on a stand at a trade show booth, um, but they won't let you put it in the water, something's going on there. Um, ask to fly it. Ask for a demonstration. We're more than happy uh, to accommodate that. We're always, we travel with test tanks. We travel everywhere with our ROVs with the idea of for potential buyers and our users to get their hands on it and, and feel what it's like to, to drive one of the most popular ROVs out there. Real quick, I want to touch on some of our global dealer networks. We've got 40 representatives around the country uh, on six continents, and six of those, touching on the service factor of ROV purchasing, six of those are fully equipped facilities for service. So uh, one of those points is, if I need it service, is, the place, is there a closed place to me? Uh, of course, we do it here, and then we have five more around the world um, that can completely diagnose, tear apart, have your video right back to you, repair it, have it back to you in a minimal amount of time. Okay, um, that covers it here. I've got a list of questions coming in from Kate, thank you. Uh, let's see if we can uh, answer these for you. Can you also use the standard video ray industrial hand controller with the Ultra system? Um, right now, what we're sending with this system that's, that's shipped with it is the, uh, the game controller and the hand controller. Um, so that's all we're recommending use in there. Now, it's not set up. There's the software that's not set up for the industrial hand controller. So I'm going to say use the game controller uh, with the Ultra system. Um, we could probably tweak it out for you so you can use the industrial hand controller. Um, and it's just it's some software code that we have to upload. But the controller is kind of what we designed around this. Um, so that's what we ship with it. If you, you know, want to talk to us offline about that, uh, let us know and we can help you out. Okay, will the sub that comes with the Ultra system work with a standard Pro 4 control panel? 
The answer is yes. Nothing has changed about the submersible. The sub is the same that you get from the Ultra all the way up to the Pro 4 Plus base, you know, big ROV system. Uh, it's the same sub. So the only thing that's different is our power supply at the top that's uh, coming down to the sub. Again, 48 volts from here as opposed to 75 in the Pro 4. Um, but it's the same sub. It maneuvers the same. It's the same maintenance uh, required on it. And um, so, yeah, same, same ballast, same everything. One more coming in here. Forty-eight volts versus seventy-two volts seems like a big difference in power. Will it have the power to swim against currents? Um, it, yes, it is a big difference, but uh, the the voltage uh, in in this particular system, just like uh, I'm using the GTO that we used to have an ex as an example, and it's probably not good because I'm not sure if you know what it is or not. Um, with that system, we were able to, to hold in about a two knot head current. Um, so same, same with this, uh, the Pro 4 Ultra sub right here. Now, is working in a two knot current difficult? Yes, um, it requires weighting and you know, some clump weighting and stuff like that and a more experienced pilot. Um, but can the sub work, swim against currents? Yes, I'd say two knots. Um, is probably your max, and you know, depending on the experienced pilot that you are, um, you might be able to do a little bit better than that. The sub is designed uh, hydrodynamically to perform better in currents than some of the uh, the ROVs that are small ROVs out there that are more boxy with more surface area. So the, just the shape alone of the ROV will assist it in swimming against currents as well. Um, but anything more than, than that it will, it will take a skilled operator and some tricky weighting. Um, but again, those are all things that, that we teach in our training classes um, and stuff that we're happy to answer uh, offline um, with the contact information I'll give you here in a second. So, uh, What would be the payload? Would it carry water quality equipment that has a tether of its own? Um, Payload, all right, so if we say that some of our, our biggest payload that we have out there would be our autonomous sub that's carrying a DVL uh, and it's carrying a multi-beam imaging sonar, both that are weigh you know, up to 10 pounds in air. Um, the trick is getting this stuff neutrally buoyant underwater. Now we've carried massive 3D cameras on these before, specifically designed by Woods Hole to film inside of the USS Arizona. Um, took some modification in float blocks, but as long as we can get you know, stuff underwater, neutrally buoyant. Um, we can we can put down there, and you know, much bigger than the size of our ROV. It takes a little bit of engineering, um, maybe you know, more flotation on top. Um, but if your if your instruments are neutrally buoyant, um, you know, we could we could carry a, a formidable load down there, on, neutrally buoyant underwater, um, that has a tether of its own. We've married tethers to our tethers before. Uh, we've done it with the 3D camera that I mentioned from Woods Hole. You know, some wire ties or whatever, marrying tether to our own is not a problem. We've done that uh, several times in the past. Uh, would a second camera be possible? Can I missed on there, my apologies. An external camera is uh, indeed um, a, 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 an accessory for this. Uh, we do sell an external camera. Uh, it would sit right up top here, or you can mount it anywhere you want uh, on the ROV. And on the hand controller, there is a, a one and two button so, to flip flop in between cameras. You won't get both live camera views on your screen here. Uh, you'll get one or the other, but you can flip back and forth. So if you want to see something behind you, or if you're in a water tank and you want to see something up, um, you know, just flip that and. And uh, absolutely, you can uh, you can see a, a second uh, camera view on there. Are there any plans to go to the other side of the spectrum instead of the light ultra, more of a pro four on steroids? Um, <laughs> uh, the answer to that short answer is yes. We are going to to the other side of the spectrum. It's not necessarily with the pro four. Uh, we do have another system that's in development as we speak. Uh, the details are forthcoming on that. Um, it will follow our, our you know, platform of ease of use, ease of service. Uh, we are looking to go to more of a modular 
ROV system where you can slap on as many thrusters as you want, slap on this and that. Um, so, but again, I don't want to get too much into that, but yes, uh, there are new things in development for VideoRay, and uh, those will be coming out very shortly.